Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial to make this uh, fire or flame uh, version A2. Uh, the principle has been discussed by many different people. So basically all techniques and skills should be known uh, in the community. That's why I'm not very motivated to make a tutorial for this one. But uh, since people asked, maybe it would be still helpful to make some reference out of it. So let's just start. So here we're in Blender. Let's go to the node editor. As always, I'm going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. But uh, honestly, there is nothing really special. Let's start with a curve linear. You potentially can realize that almost for every tutorial, I'm starting with a curve linear. <laughs> Which is very interesting, but uh, it's it's uh, really a useful thing I usually do. Uh, it's essentially just the curve line and the resample curve. There's uh, basically nothing special with yet. And in this particular case, we're using a uh, custom bevel, and we can take the radius to one or two. It does not really matter. Okay, uh, you get a kind of sort of idea. And uh, we need to store UV map. Here, you may wonder that why don't I just use a grid node, which is much simpler than using four nodes. And uh, the control does not really change too much. You have the vertices, counts, values, counts, and so on. Okay, so why do I do this? Uh, I will discuss later. Uh, let's set a material. And uh, we can call that as a flame, just to make your life easier. Uh, and then we are going to the shader editor. What I'm going to do is basically just to take a UV sphere. Uh, no, 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 not UV sphere. It's a gradient texture. Yes, gradient texture. <laughs> uh, I have the spherical. And uh, we do not immediately see anything usable. Okay, now we see it. But the coordinate is something restricted to the left button corner. Because if we're using the UV or generate it, uh, usually we're using UV map. Yes. If you do not have a UV map, you just take the attribute node and type in UV map. Usually we're using UV map, and uh, the center is still from the left button corner, and uh, to the right is one, to the top is also one. So this is the UV, and the right upper corner is one one. Okay. So this is the traditional case of a UV map. So in this case, what we are going to do is just to subtract the 0 0.5 to make a kind of offset. Now we do not really see this spherical shape. We're going to scale that. And then we have this kind of structure. Okay. Of course, what you can do is you just offset that a little bit so that the center goes to the bottom. And you can scale that up or scale that down. You can also take a multiply. And you can try to make the flame goes upper a little bit more. But basically, this is kind of idea. This is a, a little bit ugly, but you can tweak all these kind of values by your own. Okay. So now we have this tiny flame. Then we are going to apply a kind of a 2D technique. Uh, in which many people are used that in After Effects to make a flame, which is essentially just uh, adding noise to this coordinate. So what we're going to do is that I need to take a noise texture. And I basically denormalize that so that initially this uh, factor is outputting 0 to 1, but now this is negative 1 to positive 1. And uh, this is the same as the color. 
as you may potentially visualize that there are lots of dark area because these are negative values and then we basically add this noise to affect our uh, gradient texture then immediately you see these kind of results and then you just uh, try to tweak these values uh, you may increase the details uh, increase the roughness but you know this uh, value is from negative one to positive one sometimes it's a little bit too large so we're going to scale that down a little bit this is actually kind of a geometry node principle okay yes uh, so we have this uh, fire and uh, if you want to animate that you can just uh, add another vector to move the uh, noise up uh, this is the axis uh, this is y axis this is x axis so you animate this x axis then you get that it really depends on the UV you construct because as I mentioned earlier that it's very possible that you use a grid node to replace all this kind of thing. Anyway, so then I'm going to combine XYZ. Uh, we are going to add a time for this X value. Sometimes uh, it's very common that in many tutorials they will tell you that you type in this symbol and you type frame and then by playing the animation we'll realize that this number is increasing this is actually a driver as you can see there is a delete driver copy driver edit driver so on i do not really like this method this is because if you make that into a group node asset uh, it will probably break in other files so i usually use another method we have this attribute it contains geometry object instance view layer view layer is very important and uh, there is a python path uh, you just uh, copy the data path and you paste that it's called a frame currents of this view layer and you just input that uh, then you realize there is an animation it's actually basically the same uh, right now this animation is a little bit too high so we're going to divide that to quite large number and we need a negative number so make that to negative so now we have this flame going and uh, you may also colorize this entire thing so here let's go through the option i'm going to stick with ev let's go through alpha blend and i'm going to uh mix shader so for dark area dark area which is the first shader i'm going to make that transparent uh, alternatively for the second part i'm going to make that into an emission shader and you may also put a color ramp to that to make it more flame like So let's the center part is the white, second part maybe a little bit orange, and the third part maybe a little bit dark red, a uh, dark red, flame like. You may also add a kind of a smoke. It's not uh, very well visible here, but uh, you may potentially see there is a kind of dark areas of a smoke already available. Okay, so this is kind of an example, and you can increase the strength and you can take on the bloom but I want to notify you that uh, for AGX which is the default of your color management sometimes the color will be unified so you might want to use a filmic or standard which really pops up the saturation while it's bumping the bloom saturation or lightness yes lightness uh, at the same time so you get a kind of idea and you play this animation you get this kind of a flame 
Here, the traditional method is to use a displacement modifier, but uh, it comes with various limitations, especially if you're using geometry nodes. Uh, so I'm not going to use that. I'm rather going to do the displacement inside geometry nodes. So we take a set of position and we take a noise CD. And uh, actually the principle is basically 100% the same that uh, we have a noise texture. We're adding some values into certain um, axis and basically that's it. So if you look at the solid view, we do not have enough division. So let's increase the division, maybe 35, 35. And we basically translate position, which is the equivalent of adding the positions onto certain axis. And then we take a time info node. As you can see, even the value is basically the same. We have a time inside the node. And I'm going to negative the value divided by 25 and make that into the z-axis. So that we can see this plane is moving upwards. And if you uh, tweak the values a little bit, I'm actually not sure the correct values, but you just try to see that you can see, oh, there is a flame which is a wiggling. It's not a very realistic because if you think that as a kind of a torch or other things, you realize that this button part should probably not move. We're going to stabilize it with a fold. So what kind of factor can we use that as a fold? Here you realize there's in the UV that uh, we have uh, this separate X, Y, Z. And you can see on this X axis, this is going from zero, this is going from one. So we can use this X value as a fold, which is actually just the scaling this color down. So that if you go to the solid view, you can see uh, by the top is 100% noise, on the bottom is basically there is no noise. So you get this kind of a flag features and finally you just try to tweak all some parameters increasing the scales increasing the frequencies uh, it looks kind of very ugly but sometimes this is how it looks depends on the parameters and it depends on your speed okay this is too much 15 and or 25 okay it really depends on your parameters i'm not going to too much details up to this moment, you may think that, uh, oh, I do not need all this kind of geometry nodes. I can really just start with a plane and go with the displacement modifier. But uh, things become more tricky if you want to have different fires, like many instances of fires. Uh, in this case, what we can do in geometry nodes is that you can just point uh, instance geometry which is uh, equivalent to duplicate elements in this case. So I'm instancing this for 10 times because everything is the same. So it only looks kind of darker with overlapping geometry, but it doesn't give anything new yet. Uh, we lose the displacement because we didn't realize instance. So if I realize instance, we get our displacement back. And I'm going to store name the attribute because I need a store an uh, ID. So let's take an index. Index is an integer. And I'm just going to name that as an I. Here, let's look at our noise. I'm going to take this uh, attribute and then name that as an I. And I'm going to use this index to affect our noise texture. It may not be very obvious about what's really being changed, but you can see there are some differences. The differences can be more prominent if you start to separate uh, the noise texture as well. So let's take a named attribute. And we're also going to take an I, and then we're going to plug in the seed. You may potentially realize that this CD is actually just the z-axis in this particular case because they basically follow exactly the same principle. Okay. 
So now you can see they are actually more separated out. The different plane are having different uh, displacement. And now you play this animation, you can see they're uh, kind of overlapping but not overlapping uh, flames because they are flying in different directions and so on. So you can play around the parameters, maybe increase the scale, decrease the scale. It's also possible that you increase the rotation a little bit, random rotation. And just a little bit to separate their geometry. Okay. So now you have different layers of fire, which makes that, I think, more interesting compared to the initial result. And uh, this story does not end here. As you know, this is a kind of a plane structure. So if you go to the camera view, and sometimes if you rotate the view, uh, you may see some flaws. It's not a very prominent here because I random rotated everything. But if I do not random rotate that, you realize that I can see uh, the other side of the plane and uh, it looks not as good as the front side. Okay. So sometimes to solve this problem, uh, in many scenarios, people are using kind of a cardboard method. So they are basically changing the rotation of this plane relative to the camera. So what it end up with is a track to a modifier, a track to constraint to your camera. Okay. So that's uh, this uh, cardboard will actually look at this camera. This is kind of okay, but it also contains a problem that it does not really change with the perspective. Right now I'm looking from the top to this flame, but this flame still is just laying on the ground. As you can see, it's definitely wrong. Okay. Uh, so sometimes I do not really like this method in this particular case. So what can we do? And the alternative is that as you realize that we're using this curve and the bevel curve, and there is a set curve normal, Starting in 4.1, we have this uh, free option to set the particular normal. And we can use this feature to uh, set the tilt alignment to make it look at camera. Okay. And uh, as a comparison, we can take another view. So now I'm still looking at the camera view and I'm rotating that. You can see this flame still go with my camera, which is the same as the track two. But if I'm going on a different perspective, then you can see this 3D perspective is actually kind of being kept because we are never really rotating this plane at all. We're just the cha uh, changing the perspective of how this curve is being visualized to camera. I don't know how to explain in a very good way, but just to try to understand that. Okay. And sometimes this kind of feature, I think is very helpful and much better than track two, because the track two is working on the whole object. But in this particular case, every vertices of the curve will be affected with this tilt alignment for a better perspective. At the end, we can finish this story by uh, instance this entire flame to different places. For example, we can instance on a, uh, let's take that onto a UV sphere because I want to simplify this entire thing. And I'm just going to instance on the top of my UV sphere. Let's take in a vertex group and assign a vertex group, group. And then I'm going to import my sphere into the node tree. So now we have this sphere inside our node tree. And I'm going to take a separate, uh, I'm going to take this point distribute. 
and uh, right now you can see everything is distributed everywhere but we can take this named attribute to make it only instance of this group and then uh, it's possible that you use this custom points or you can just uh, switch that to instance of points essentially they are the same as you can see this, even the socket are basically the same I have rotation skills they are basically the same nodes it's just that I made this more specialized for a particular purpose okay. so anyway I can I think I can just replace it I have these points I have this curve and I have this instance into the store geometry and I can take this uh, random rotation a little bit so finally if I'm looking at the final output it looks like this and I just look at the cameras sometimes it may be a little bit slow depends on the amount of points you have this is also a reason that uh, why I use this point the distribute instead of this kind of distribute on points because I can set almost the exact amount and finally let's just take this uh, very precision to scale them down a little bit and finally you can see this animation okay and uh, maybe take a little bit random rotations as well and where is my UV sphere Oh yes, I have my UV spheres at the bottom. So it's overall it looks like this. And uh, yeah, basically this is yes. And because this flame is working based on UV, so it always goes into the right direction, and so on and so forth. Uh, I think this tutorial is longer than my expectation. Uh, I hope I covered all important aspects that you need to know for this kind of workflow. But uh, basically, this is it. I hope you enjoy this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.